In this video, we're gonna talk about three things that you have to stop if you want to get a higher MCAT score. We're focusing on less is more here. My name's John, I'm a fourth year medical student. I scored in the 90th percentile on my MCAT and I've helped thousands of students do the same thing. The very first thing that you've gotta stop if you want a higher MCAT score is feeling guilty about studying more. How many times have you cut your studies short because you know your friends wanna go out and you had plans to study all Friday night, but your friends wanna go out, so you go out with them or you're home for the weekend and your parents are giving you crap because you know, you're trying to study, but they want you to spend time with them and things of that nature. So you've got to stop feeling guilty about that. Everything is only temporary. So just put your head down, tell them you're sorry, you love them. You prefer to spend time with them. It's a lot more fun to hang out with your friends and family than it is to read about freaking Le Chatelier's principle again. But it's what you have to do to get to where you wanna be. So quit feeling guilty about it and just work harder. Just study harder. You'll get there. The second thing you gotta stop doing is just like halfway finishing a program or like putting in half the effort required to fulfill a program and then going and switching to another one. The truth of the matter is that most MCAT programs are gonna work for you because it's not that difficult of a formula. You know, you learn all the sciences, you get some pretty decent strategies underneath your belt, and then you rip just a ton of practice questions, and you're gonna score, you know, like at least a 510, which is about the average score for students accepted to the to medical school. And since we sell programs and courses, it's probably a bad idea for me to tell you this, like, but most of them are gonna work. So while some have different perks, you know, if you want a ultra thorough one, then you might be looking at like Kaplan's. If you want a fast one that's more like conversational in nature, then you're probably gonna be looking at like the IFD plus UWorld course. It really just kind of depends on what you want. So do your research before you get a program if you haven't purchased one yet, and then just go all in on that program. We of course have tons of videos about how to modify each program and make sure that it's all good. And most of that just means we've got all of our strategy stuff for free on YouTube. And then we have like a final month prep where we walk you through how to properly utilize all the double AMC materials. Cause you're gonna wanna take all those if you're taking the exam. But you're getting in your way, you just gotta stop halfway finishing a program and then switching to another one. Because two halves do not make a whole, right? It's not addition, it's more like multiplication whenever you're studying for the MCAT. The third thing that you've gotta stop is setting yourself up to fail. I know you do this because I do this. I don't know what type of like self-destructive thing or why we have this self-destructive nature in us, but how many of you know that you're busy and know that you need more time to study for the MCAT and then you take on more projects? You know you should be studying for the MCAT, but you're like, oh, well, I, I need to go job shadow. I need to go shadow surgery too, or I should take on this volunteering experience, or I should actually, you know, pick up more shifts at work. Even though you technically have the money, if you kind of tighten the belt a little bit, go Dave Ramsey rice and beans for a little bit, you gotta stop making yourself busier. You need more time if you're studying for the MCAT, and the time that you do have, just full send study for the MCAT. It's only temporary. Put all your effort into it and work hard you'll get there. Also gotta minimize distractions when it comes to setting yourself up to fail. I mean, I know people that study with the TV on, like I don't care how many times you've seen The Office, like you're still gonna watch Dwight cut the face off of, of a mannequin if, if you have the option of watching that versus studying amino acids, right? So turn the TV off. Music helps some people. I feel like it's a distraction to most. Go to a quiet place, wherever that may be. You know, don't study on your bed. Study at a table, study at a desk so that you're upright and you're focused. And for the love of God, throw this thing as far away from you as you can, right? Because you, we have all sat down to study for two hours and put, you know, 45 minutes of that into Instagram before. So get that away from you. When you're there to study, just study. And then when you're done with that study, then you can guilt-free scroll through like TikTok or, you know, watch TV or go do something more fun, like hang out with friends, go to the gym, play ball, stuff like that. And this last one, not everybody does this, but I think more people do it than are honest about it. And this is part of setting yourself up to fail. Stop cheating during your practice exams or during practice questions. I know so many people, and honestly, I get the temptation a lot, and I've done it before, but 
for some reason you get this strong temptation you're taking a practice question you're like oh what is that again like i think i know that let me just google it to make sure that i actually do know it and so you'll look it up and then you get the answer and then you use it and then you're like excited you're like i got the question right and no that doesn't make any sense you need to miss the question it burns it in your brain if you miss the question like and it doesn't really matter what your u world percentage is or what your practice exam scores are what matters is that you learn from every single question that you take and for some reason we are wired to learn to avoid the negative stimulus much more than you know like the positive stimulus so if you are to you know burn your hand on a stove you're much more likely to not touch that stove ever again than if you like touch a soft blanket and you're like oh that feels good you might touch the blanket again you definitely will not touch the hot stove again right so pain really reinforces behaviors so just miss the question. Stop cheating during your practice test. I know you're doing it. If you're ever like, well, nobody will ever know. And then you kind of get guilty. You're like, well, man, I, I feel like somebody knows. They do. It's me. I'm there. I'm watching you. Stop cheating. So there are a lot of things you have to do to study for the MCAT properly and to score well on it. But these are three things that you got to stop. You got to stop feeling guilty because it's temporary. You got to do what you got to do. You got to stop halfway finishing a program. You know, if you're whatever you start, is do your research before it and just go full in on it. And you know, like if you want a comprehensive thorough thing, you can use one like the big box ones. If you want something that's gonna help you study quickly, it's gonna boot camp you up to a 510, 515, something that you know you were very excited about. Get the IFD world course. So do your research before you get it, and then once you get it, just like full send into it because most of them are gonna work. Third thing you gotta stop doing is setting yourself up to fail meaning you gotta minimize distractions, you gotta stop making yourself busier just because you don't wanna study, because that's what it really is. And you gotta stop cheating during your practice tests. I'm there, I'm watching you. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.